I'd like to talk to you today about seeing with the artist's eye. When we talk about seeing with the artist's eye, we're not referring to learning how to paint or photograph or sculpt, but simply to see the world without our perceptions getting in the way. Here's what I mean by that. Human beings are hardwired to weed out unimportant information. When you are a human being trying to get to work, most of what you see is unimportant to your task. If you're walking down the street and your goal is to get through the crowd without bumping anyone and spilling your coffee, and at the same time you're thinking about getting to work on time and where you'll pick up yesterday's work when you get there, then you most likely are not noticing the sunlight reflected from, from the sidewalk onto the underside of the chins of the kids you pass. You probably aren't paying attention to how fully skylight fills in everything that isn't already directly illuminated by the sun. Look at the people in the foreground. And you probably haven't noticed how the spectacularly bright sunlight, broadened and softened by a thin overcast of cloud and glinting off the water, has thrown a docked ship into startling silhouette. And most importantly of all, you probably don't notice that the skylight in the brightened street is the same skylight that is brightening the ship. So while the ship is just as brightly illuminated as the street, it doesn't look like it. You'll probably surmise that the ship is less brightly lit than the street, when in actuality it is more intensely lit. How can this be? The answer is that our perception has changed. And unless we take the time to analyze what has happened, we will come away with an incorrect assumption about how the effect occurred. In this case, what changed was the photographic exposure. Whether with a camera or a human retina, when looking toward the sun, the aperture on a camera or the pupil in an eye will close down, letting in less light, so that the image is better exposed, so that we see the most information possible. This gives the impression that there is less light when that is not the case. Only our eyes or our apertures are letting in less light, less of the light that is there. You may wonder how this is important if you don't notice it. The fact is that it is not important to most people. There is, however, one subset of society for whom this information, this way of thinking, is very important, and those people are visual artists. We're also hardwired to perceive shapes and perspective in a certain way. A cardboard box is square. It doesn't look square, but it is. No matter which direction you look at that cardboard box, most of the angles will not appear to be 90 degrees. Yet, before we're trained to see as artists, we perceive the box as square, and we draw it as square. The road is rectangular. It doesn't look that way, but it is. We perceive it as rectangular, and we draw it that way, until we learn to see past our perceptions and simply see what we see. Here's an example of what I mean by that. I took a simple die, and I put it on a table, and I asked a six-year-old child to draw that die for me. I sat her in front of the table from this exact angle, and here's what she drew. She drew one face of the die as a square. She drew the one with the most numbers, the one that she thought was pointing towards her, ignoring the perspective and the other sides. After she showed me this drawing, I pointed out to her that there were other sides that were visible. She sat down again and drew another drawing. This one shows all three sides but no perspective. The child clearly has no understanding that there could be any shapes other than square or rectangular that she is seeing. I then sat down beside her and quickly sketched the die as I see it. She looked at my image and she looked at the die and shook her head and said, no, that's not right. The die is made of all squares, and I have drawn some diamonds. 
even though the perspective was directly in front of her for her to see, she could not perceive it, and she insisted that the drawing in perspective was incorrect because the sides had to be squared. I then had a nine-year-old boy sit down in front of this image and draw it. Here's what the nine-year-old drew. This nine-year-old boy spent almost all of his time adding the fibery detail to the sides of the box that you can see here in the image a little bit. But he too completely ignored the perspective. Because he's nine, however, he did recognize the fact that there was a sign on top that was visible. And so what he did was he drew it separately and then drew an arrow to indicate that it was on the top of the box. Once again, the perception is the box is square and therefore must be drawn square instead of drawing the lines in perspective as we actually see them. These have been some simple examples demonstrating one of the challenges that face artists without a formal background in visual arts, in my opinion, the most critical challenge. The artist who can simply see the world as it is without the veil of flawed human perception will excel. If you wish to succeed in this way and haven't already done so, I strongly recommend you participate in at least one drawing class. This class will teach you many things, but the most important of all will be how to draw exactly what you see. The act of having to draw complex shapes as they actually are will open your eyes to a whole new way of seeing. When this happens, you'll start seeing all sorts of things in the world that you never noticed before whether it be shape, color, shadow, light, or motion. So it doesn't really matter what discipline of the art you choose for yourself. A drawing class will help you become the great artist you want to be.